Hola, bienvenidos, bienvenidas, gracias por conectarse. Buenas tardes, gracias Ana María este, por, por dar inicio a esta sesión especial el día de hoy. Hello, thank you Ana María for starting this session today. We are gathered here today because of our eighth anniversary here at HIPGIF. My name is Anita Gallagher and I am part of the HIPGIF team. We are very happy that you are here with us today for this special session. Here we can see our agenda for the day, because besides celebrating, we want to share with you some valuable content to mobilize resources with digital tools. That is the reason uh, for the existence of HIPCAF. So after this uh, thank you part, that welcome part, you will get to know the team, because there are more of us at HIPCAF supporting you, the organizations that are really fueling social impact projects in the Americas. We will also be sharing the achievements so that you can see what HIPGIF does in 2022. Today, we will also be presenting a new functionality of the platform, which is peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding. And of course, we are really happy to have the chance to share with you, hear your questions, comments, opinions, and hopefully we can really have that connection with you in this Q&A session. Just a, a few reminders. The microphones are off, but we will be looking at the chat. So if you have any questions or doubts or comments, please use the chat function. And in case you want to listen to this in English, interpretation is available. So those were the important announcements. In case someone is new, someone hasn't used HIPGIF, we would like to remind you what HIPGIF is about. Our name is HIPGIF because we are part of Hispanics in Philanthropy. That's what HIP stands for. And we are a digital tool platform for Hispanics in Philanthropy. We exist in order to help mobilize resources for social impact projects in the Americas. Oftentimes, people think of us and they think immediately of crowdfunding. However, today, digital tools allow us to do far more. Of course, crowdfunding, but also other areas of interest. And we want to be more and more innovative. We want to evolve and to bring those tools closer to you so that organizations like you can mobilize more resources for your causes. So how do we do that? HIPGIF is a space for collaboration. We exist to help you, social impact organizations, nonprofit organizations working all over Latin America and with Latinx communities in the US. HIPGIF is a space to do fundraising, yes, but also to expand the way you can take advantage of the digital space to really become more visible and to invite more people to participate. And people are the second group, very important for online fundraising, hip gift, digital communities, because people are the ones who really contribute funds to the projects and causes. And these people not only want to give money, they want to feel part of social change. They want to feel part of your community, people committed to a better future. So we have organizations on the one hand and people who gave on the other hand. And of course, there is a third important groups, foundations, companies, corporations, our allies and partners. They make these special campaigns possible and special incentives that we offer possible because of this teamwork with different 
partners from philanthropy, we can provide incentives to you and people with special awards, with matching funds, so that you can do crowdfunding and online resource mobilization in new different spaces. So these three groups are important. This teamwork makes HipGIF a successful space to mobilize resources online. That is an overview of who we are. What motivates us? What makes us get up every day and deliver this crowdfunding work, giving circles, resource mobilization? We know that the campaigns that we are promoting on HEPGIF have an impact that goes beyond money. Our vision is to locate resource mobilization in the evolution of the philanthropy sector in Latin America and the US. We want to change attitudes related to donations so that more and more people identify as donors, philanthropists, and people who can contribute to a positive change. And that is a way to democratize philanthropy by delivering that message that this is not only a world where rich people or wealthy people can act. Actually, all people have something to contribute, regardless of how big or small that contribution is. Everything is valuable. And when we work with that objective, we achieve many other positive results along the way. We increase our innovation capacity, our capacity to try new digital communication strategies. And if we achieve that, then little by little, we encourage this community of people because organizations cannot exist and cannot just stand out because we have resources. We will really be out there when we have a community of people who believe in what we do and who support us as a team. So encouraging that support community is one of the benefits of being part of these campaigns and resource mobilization opportunities. If we achieve all that, we will strengthen how resilient we are as individual organizations with more opportunities to get more resources from more people. But as a social sector, as a social impact sector in Latin America, and the US with the possibility to really have deeper roots and to have wings and you know to have all those branches and leaves expanding so that we can address all the challenges unexpected things that happen in life and specific uh, projects and we will be more resilient if we have those resources and support communities that is why we exist hopefully i explained it correctly and now i would like to give the floor to my colleagues who will explain in further detail what hepkip is in 2022 Thank you, Anita, for that introduction. And of course, we would like to thank all the people, organizations, and partners that make what we do in HipGIF possible. As Anita was saying, we are a big community, and it is because of you that HipGIF exists. So we would like to acknowledge your work and thank you for that because you are part of this. First of all, I would like to thank all the philanthropic organizations and foundations supporting HipGIF with funds that are channeled directly to organizations. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for being there. And thank you for keeping and contributing to racial equality and the rights and opportunities of Latinx communities in the US, Latin America, and the Caribbean. I also wanted to thank organizations for their work, for their trust, and for the opportunity to work together, for having that chance to make incredible projects visible and helping organizations in their fundraising efforts. We really appreciate your trust and the opportunity to work together. I would also like to thank all the hip givers who donate in our on our platform. Thank you for your generosity with your contributions. Thank you for helping us democratize philanthropy and 
Thank you for helping us change the narrative. We are all philanthropists and we can all bring about social change that we want for our communities. And finally, thank you to all the artists, influencers and people supporting us on social media, sharing our posts, sharing our work. Thank you, all of you. We are really excited to keep working together and keep creating this incredible community. Hopefully it'll keep growing in the next few years. Thank you, and we'll meet again soon in future campaigns. And now I, I would like to give the floor to Fernanda to continue with the celebration. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, all of you, for joining us today. Besides telling you about HIPGIF and thanking people, foundations, and organizations for their support, we also wanted you to know our team a little bit better. Fortunately, this team has grown in the past years and hopefully it'll keep growing in the future. A few years ago, there were only two people in this team, Anita and June, and little by little, the people you see on screen have joined. So let me tell you a little bit about each of them. First of all, we have Junuet Mejia, who is our program manager, Mapi Villalobos, who is in charge of marketing and campaigns, Jessica Borges, who follows up partnerships with foundations, as well as other actors, Anita, who is supporting us in terms of training and the learning about crowdfunding campaigns. Then we have Ana Maria Lopez, who is in charge of communication. And finally, myself, Fernanda, I am in charge of administrative matters for the platform and I am the liaison with the financial department in our organization to follow up payment processes. Beside, beyond our roles at HIPGIF, we wanted to share some fun facts about ourselves so that you can know us a little bit better. So, June, the floor is yours. Tell us about that fun fact of yours. Thank you, Fernanda. This is for you to know us a little bit better. So we were asking ourselves, if you were a potato and you were asked how you'd like to be cooked, what would you say? And my answer was, I would like to be curly, a curly fry, because this is roundly delicious. Hi, my name is Mapi. Again, most of us have been in touch via email, but this is for you to know a bit more about us because you've been in touch with most of us. So my question was, if I were a crayon, what color would I be? And I would be purple. That is my favorite color. I love it. So I would be a purple crayon. Thank you, Mappy. My question was, what food do you need to live? I said ice cream because I love it. And now, um, Fernanda, your fun fact. Thank you, Jess. I also got the same question as Mappy. What color would I be if I were a crayon? I chose red. I saw not long ago that Disney movie, Red. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend it. And one of the characters said that red is a lucky color uh, that really stuck with me. So I don't know. That's why I chose that color. I do believe that that color brings good things, positive things. So that's it. That's why I chose it. Thank you for joining us. My question was also, uh, if I were a potato, how would I like to be cooked? And I chose fries with ketchup because if it's just fries then there's no point really so with ketchup okay and in terms of colors i chose blue i am lucky enough to live near the ocean so i have a lot of opportunities to really nurture myself with those views with the blue sea
Muchísimas gracias eh, a todas por compartir. Thank you all of you for sharing. We wanted to have this moment with you so that you can see something beyond emails or conversations, calls and webinars, just a little fun fact about each of us so you could get to know us a little bit better. And as Fernando was saying, since 2014, HIPGIV has tried to evolve, find inspiration and understand the needs that you have you as organizations, but also what triggers something in people so that they want to contribute to social change. Throughout these years, that is how we decided to pursue this effort to evolve, to innovate constantly and to listen to what you have to say. Now let me share some numbers with you. I think it's also important to hear about this so that you can really be a part of this journey that we have undertaken together. In these eight years, over 48,000 people have trusted the platform, not just the platform, but each and every one of you to contribute to your projects, to help you achieve your goals or to help you start that first journey if it was your first crowdfunding campaign and live that together. Over 1,000 organizations, I'm sure many of you have been part of this story, have uh, been part of the different campaigns that we have had on the platform. But also the unique thing is that they have shown their projects on the platforms and they have seen the power of crowdfunding. With all of this and with your support and with help from all the hip keepers, we have been able to channel over $4.4 million dollars for all these organizations. And as Jessica was saying, thanks to partnerships, we have been able to get over $700,000 in matching funds. So it really adds up. As communities, organizations, individuals, we can have a larger impact on these Latinx communities. Of course, numbers are not really meaningful if I don't tell you more about this, right? So what's happened? Throughout this eight-year period, we have had different campaigns. Some have lasted longer than others, such as Go Women or Latinx Give. They have existed pretty much since the beginning of the existence of hip give they have been growing and they are deeply rooted in what hispanics and philanthropy represents as an organization uh, fighting for the rights of girls and women in the continent and of course celebrating the latinx culture how generous we are opening the door to all organizations in the us and latin america to show the incredible work they are carrying out Throughout these years, these campaigns have helped us grow and learn so much. We are always looking at what you need so that we can respond to current needs. And there are new campaigns such as Mexico Dona. Originally, it was going to be an in-person process in Mexico and because of the pandemic, it became a training process, completely digital, which was really a milestone for me and the team because it really triggered all that creativity and innovation to connect with you digitally by developing this uh, network and hopefully you were able to work with that on you know how to uh, develop and incorporate technological tools so as to have a lot more interaction and build more trust this campaign has grown in the past couple of years alongside the team and alongside this journey and this path we are working on Over these years, we have had special campaigns with 
the support and trust from partners in different countries. For example, at the campaign that we had in Guatemala with Fundación Tigo, and this is something we have done to keep supporting those organizations in Guatemala, uh, Giving Tuesday as well. So that is how we try to maintain those partnerships with different partners in different countries so that we can reach more and more organizations, also responding with specific campaigns to support all the organizations that felt the impact of COVID and the pandemic. Last year, we also had campaigns specifically for the Yucatan Peninsula after all the hurricanes that we saw in this period on top of COVID. And there was also direct work with many different organizations, grassroots organizations, large organizations. So over this eight year period, we have understood the challenges and opportunities. And based on that, we have been able to shape our sessions so that we can respond to the needs of each of your organizations. And of course, at the same time, we want to respond to the different opportunities and contexts that we see. We want to know how to support other organizations and other sectors. Like what I said about last year, for example, all the organizations that were impacted by COVID, the music industry, for example, how we could support them through different artists. So the campaigns, you see all this happening. And as Fernanda was saying, at first there were two people, now there are six people who are, you know, there making sure that the technology works. And of course, maybe they will uh, talk about that. But uh, two years ago, we had an upgrade. We changed our platform. So we needed to keep running the campaigns while we were working on all of this technology part because we knew that we needed to evolve to be able to respond, not only in terms of technology, but also in such a way that it was a lot easier for users to really navigate through the platform. And at the same time, we wanted campaigns to be able to respond to each of these steps. So over these eight years, we have taught over 400 training sessions. As I said, they evolve every day. We started with sessions which were about defining a methodology, and we learned a lot from that feedback. It's really important for us to get your feedback because that helps us fine tune all those little details to really know how to share and have that peer-to-peer -peer learning and really elevate the level of training that we are providing for organizations that are increasing their level, right? So how we work with partners so that we can provide far more advanced content and how to connect with other organizations, foundations and experts that could contribute to your campaigns as well. And as I was saying, we have been improving by understanding what the sector is like and what the trends in technology and innovation are, because all of that can help our work in the philanthropy sector. And of course, MAPI will delve into the peer-to-peer -peer part, but this is also about the digital giving circles and really the effort has required a lot of coordinations. We have grown as an organization, but also, uh, this is about uh, responding to what the context is demanding. And last but not least, we have also grown in terms of visibility. On social media, over 42,700 followers. So this is something we love. It helps us grow so that your campaigns have more visibility and so that they can reach more people who can become involved and involved and contribute to your projects. Also, I wanted to share something with you. This year, we received an award 
because we are a responsible platform in terms of technology and innovation we are happy to share that with you and as we said before we would be nothing without you so now i would like to give the floor to mappy so that she can tell you about the technological advances that we have seen on the platform uh, actually anna will start and then i will talk about the technical details Thank you, June. It's really nice to hear about the hip give, uh, about you know the hip give history and the possibilities that we have for the future. Of course, the context is changing, and we know that working collectively as a community is what will help us keep having this generosity. Hip give is still growing, generating new technology so that we can take care of that part and you can keep connecting with your community with those people and supporting the causes because at the end of the day that's why we are here our crowdfunding campaigns are our star uh, tool if you will but we also have other campaigns and we have digital giving circles and of course we wanted to talk about peer-to-peer -peer giving which is a functionality to have individual campaigns and the crowdfunding campaigns. So you have a project on the platform and then you can add people who act as individual crowdfunders. So that means that every person will use their contact networks, their tools, the promotion, so that they can keep promoting the project and capturing contributions. Individual pages for organizations will contribute to this big general project. And that way you can see little by little how these contributions increase. This is also a way to have a healthy competition and the dynamics is really fun. You can see the results for every individual. And at the end of the day, this is a tool for the community to be able to share and to do that in a more unique, personal way. All right, now it is up to me. This is more technical, so to speak. So I would like to explain to you how you can create a peer-to-peer -peer project. We have always said this, you know that we love getting your feedback so that we know how to keep improving the platform so that we can give you the tools that you need as organizations to raise more money and to reach more people. Many of you had asked some questions like, how can I do this? How can I identify a person that is bringing people over to my project? We know that there are very specific people who act as ambassadors or promoters who have even hosted events or, you know, some activities to help you raise funds. That is why we came up with this peer-to-peer -peer functionality, also known as a sub-campaign. So in order for you to activate this on the platform, you need to have an existing project, right? An open crowdfunding project. So that would be the first step. You know that if you go to the Hip Gift platform on the left-hand side, there is a tab that says members. So that is where you can register the people that you want to be a part of your team in your organization. There is a specific profile that says peer to peer. So that is where you have to register the person or uh, several persons that you want to run a sub campaign within your project. Okay, it is important to register them first because of the access and the permits that they need, right? So their dashboard, their panel will be different what they'll say will be different compared to what you can see as members of the team or 
administrators. This is different because, you know, different accesses and authorizations are different for those who have a peer-to-peer -peer profile. They will only be able to see what belongs to that sub-project. So first of all, you need to have a campaign on HEPGIF. When it is uploaded, then maybe you can go like, okay, I want to have, I don't know, one, two, three, four promoters. That is up to you. So you register each person under members. Then you will see that as soon as you activate a crowdfunding campaign, you have a button on the right hand side that says peer to peer. That means that when you click on this button, you will be able to see a screen. This is it. So that is where you will select the person that will be your promoter or the person in charge of running this sub campaign within this project. You select the person, then you type in a temporary name. That is a requirement. The person will be able to change the name later, but this is only for the system to register the person. And again, this is in the organization profile. So at this point, you can tell this person, say, Junwev, for example, I created your profile on HEPGIF. You can log in to the platform using your email and password. And then she will go to HEPGIF so that she can edit the peer-to-peer -peer project. So as a promoter for this peer-to-peer -peer project, just like for the rest of the platform project, Junuet will have to click on that pencil with the little box so that she can edit this project. She will open the project, she will be able to change the name, she will be able to change the title and to set a goal. Of course, the goal cannot be larger than the goal that you have set for your crowdfunding project. She will be able to set the dates, but again, the campaign cannot run beyond the end date for the main crowdfunding project, right? like the parent project, if you will. And Junuet will be able to have content in either English or Spanish and a banner. The peer-to-peer -peer project is very similar to a crowdfunding project. As you can see, this is the peer-to-peer -peer profile that Junuet has. She can only edit the peer-to-peer -peer project that you assigned to her and she will be able to see only the list of donors for this specific project. That is to say, she cannot see the whole list for the parent project. That is why I said it was important to give people the relevant authorizations for this. So she goes to peer to peer, and then she will click on this red button to ask for review. And as an organization, you will get an email saying, that Junuet created a peer-to-peer -peer project and it's ready for you to review it. As an organization, you can go to the platform, look at the project, make sure everything is all right. And if you agree, then you send it to us, you send it to us, HEPGIF, for review, and then it will be published. Once it is published, the same thing that happens for crowdfunding projects will happen here. You will get a URL with the peer-to-peer -peer project. So it's easier for the promoter to have the direct URL for people to go and make a donation. It's important for you to know that this is a peer-to-peer -peer project and you will be able to see that. As you can see, there will be a little icon with like a little heart. So that means that that is a peer-to-peer -peer project. Again, it is important to mention that what is raised under the peer-to-peer -peer project will also be reflected under the general project, right? You will see it right now, just like that, peer-to-peer. -peer, and in a few months, you will see it with a specific project uh, color that says peer-to-peer -peer, so that you can see the progress made by each people, by each person in this individual sub-campaigns for the promoters. Muchísimas gracias, Mati. 
Thank you so much, Mati. This is our new functionality. We are very happy. Organizations started trying that in our last campaign and they were very happy with the results. So hopefully you will decide to use it and then you can tell us how you do with it. We also wanted to share some information about our upcoming campaigns, Mexico Dona in June, and then the following week, we will have an information session for this. This is a campaign for organizations in Mexico, uh, social impact organizations. Then we have the Pride campaign uh, celebrating uh, organizations that help the LGBTQ plus community. And we have a, a campaign discussing migration, displacement, and of course, supporting organizations that work on this. And of course, we will have Giving Tuesday, like every year with Latinx Give. So follow us on our social media. You can also get our newsletters on hepgift.org. And that way you will get all the information that we have about our campaigns, about new functionalities, the articles that are published on our learning center. So keep in touch. Again, thank you so much for joining. As we were saying, these are the new functionalities that we have on the platform. And in the next few months, you will see new improvements technology wise you see that some campaigns are being launched for the first time this year and we are really grateful that you are part of this great community that you keep trusting the hip gift team so that you can raise more and more funds and so that you can keep having an impact on your communities do you have any questions or comments? If there's anything you'd like to say, please use the chat and we will be responding to that. Patricia is asking about the Mexico Dona campaign dates. It will run throughout June, uh, Patty, but again, you can join the webinar that we will have next week. This is an information session. We will share the link with you. There it is. So that you can look at all the information about this campaign. Fernanda, I think you can answer, uh, Barbara. I'm sorry, Mapi, I cannot see the question. She is asking about the transfer of what was raised in, in, during the Go Women campaign. Oh, okay. As you know, the payment process for each campaign takes eight to 12 weeks after the end of the campaign or after all the documents and information and all that is complete on the platform on, in your profile. So for the Go Women campaign, we are four weeks, we are at four weeks after the end of the campaign. What we are doing right now is making sure that all of the financial part is uh, conciliate, reconciliated so that we can go, go to the payments and so that our finance department can do everything more easily. Thank you, Barbara. Another question says, um, do we create additional content for the peer-to-peer -peer campaign? That really depends on your organization and your promoter. Previous campaigns have used the same uh, material, very similar images for their peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So that will really depend on the promoter and the organization. 
If you are having an event or something like that, ideally you can create at least one image so that people can be aware of the date and place. But I do think that the peer-to-peer -peer functionality can be exploited in many different ways. So it's a really up to you as an organization and up to the promoters so that you can really leverage this tool that we have. We will upload a specific guide for this tool. It will be uploaded to our learning center. Just like there is a guide for the platform, there will be an administrative guide that will be very useful, particularly for Mexican organizations because the process is longer and different. And we are also about to share that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, tool guide. We are already working on creating those contents for you. Are there any more questions? Of course, you can contact us on our social media or you can send an email to hipgif at hiponline.org. We will be more than happy to answer in case you have questions or comments also follow us on social media we share information there too not only information about hip gift but also information about other partners that could help you on this journey uh, you know training crowdfunding uh, but also other types of opportunities that can help you as organizations if you go to the HIPGIVE website, you will also find information about upcoming campaigns. And if you haven't done so, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. We share relevant information there. And please remember to explore our learning center. As Mapmi was saying, we are always creating more content that can help you on your campaigns. So this is it for now but before saying goodbye we wanted to say thank you for joining us we wanted to share with you what our history has been what this journey has been like and we are here with you see you soon thank you